Hello, so this is the day after the auction. Uh, it was a long day, and just some things, uh, heads up and tips I'm going to try to give you if you've never been to an auction. Uh, um, one of the things that uh, you need to be focused, <laughs> and it could be, you know, most of mine, that I, the ones I go to are like 10 hour days, um, and you I always try to sit in the front row. Um, one of the things I try to get there early enough to get a front row seat. I usually don't have enough seats for everybody, and so uh, you need to get there early. <clears throat> a lot of people end up standing, and the reason why is the distractions. Uh, you get this, you, you can get easily distracted by people around you talking. Sometimes you can't hear the auctioneer. Um, uh, you know, people want to talk to you, especially if it's a local one and you know a lot of people there. They all want to chit chat and visit and stuff, but you got to stay focused on what's going on up in front of you because uh, you're going to miss out. The other thing is, <clears throat> I get a front row seat because, um, uh, I mean, I know the auctioneer, I know I know people that work the auction, and you have the auctioneer's attention. When you're sitting in the front row, you know, he's looking at you, he knows I'm a reseller, he knows I'm probably going to buy more than most other people that are there just to buy for themselves. So he's going to be, he watches me, he knows he's going to get a sale out of me, probably more than he is anyone else. So um, he's focused. So he's like watching you, and he's watching you. Sometimes you'll, what will happen is, if he wants to move things really fast, he'll throw something up there for five dollars. And if nobody says anything, and you go five bucks, you raise your hand first, boom, five dollars gavels down, and it's yours. So um, it, he wants to move. They have a lot of stuff to move through, so they they got to move, move, move. So you get that's how you get a lot of good deals. So, so I always try to get front row right in the middle, right straight in front of the auctioneer um, and, and, and his helpers because if you can be in front of the helpers they call it out too but I like to watch the auctioneer um, so that's one tip uh, to get started and um, I'll be showing you some kind of scenes I took a couple clips during the auction um, and some examples of things so uh, anyhow let's start and we're just playing, somebody made 10 on the bill for it I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Two, man. 10, 15. 15. Okay, we'll the other one breaks. 15. Now 20. Now 25. Now 30. Now 35. Now 40. Now 45. What do you mean? You sure? You did that before? 45. See, one, they always say one more time. 45. Now 50. 50? Yes, go ahead. Go have a deal. 50 dollar deal. Yes, sir. 50. Now 55. 55. 55. 55. Now 60. Now 65. 65. So 60 dollars. Right there. Number 583. That is the way to do it. So going to an auction can be fun. Um, you're 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 working. You're you know you're concerned about getting what you need or what you want out of the out of the auction. Don't let that don't let that bother you. There's going to be plenty of other things, other times, plenty of stuff. So being an auction can be really fun, and this is an example of how the auctioneers make it fun, how the workers there make it fun, and just the crowd alone can make it fun. Now look, you got to sell this. Let me see this thing. This has to be the ugliest lamp I think I've ever seen. This is uh, is the other one ugly than that? Okay, this comes in the second place. All right. That's not that bad. It's all bevel. Well, it's got to be pretty nice. There was probably a bunch of money when it was new. Somebody give me a ten on the middle of the lamp. Hit ten dollars for it. Got to be ten. Got to be ten. Got to be ten. Got to be ten. Who said that? I'm a five. Five bucks for the lamp. Five bucks. We'll find a shade for it. Don't you worry about that. Anybody want for five dollars? What's wrong with that lamp? I didn't mean that. It is ugly. It is. Are you getting it, sir? Pardon me. Okay, let me have the bowl, please. Take the bowl out. And keep the bowl, because we ain't getting that. I can't have that, but we have bowl over here. You get the lamp, but you ain't getting that bowl. Thank you very much. We need that up here. What's your, what's your number, sir? 563? You got it for a dollar. So another tip for, for bidding at an auction is that the auctioneer is going to always start at a, kind of high as, at a high high number, okay? And you'll notice if you listen to some of the, the, the auctions, and whether they're online or in this video, um, they'll start at a high number, nobody says anything. You may think, wow, that's a good deal, I should bid there. But you need to wait. Don't, don't blurt out a bid right away. A lot of new people will start bidding whatever the auctioneer comes out with. So you'll notice in some, when there's a lot of experienced auction people, auction buyers there, They'll start off, they'll say $25, nobody, 25, 25, nobody says anything. And then he drops it down, you know, 15, 15, 15, nobody says anything. It drops it down, 10, 10, 10, 10. Then somebody will generally kick in, okay, $10. Sometimes you don't say anything, you drop it down to five, and somebody finally kicks in at five. It, it may, the bids may go up above the 25 that he started with, and people know that. 
but they try to get it down at the lowest. You wait for him to get down to the lowest as he will go to start bidding. So don't jump in. Don't jump in at 25. The minute he says 25, jump in. Don't you know? Don't do that. Start down low. There's a good chance you're going to get it for less than what he starts the bid for because you don't know who else is in the room. You don't know what other people think about the item. You don't. There may be people that don't care or don't even know what it is, and so it'll start. You'll start down really low. Sometimes they don't get bids for anything, and there's your chance to just say two dollars or go less than what he's saying, and they'll say he'll sell it to you. But um, so never jump in on a bid right off. This example coming up is an example of a, of a um, lots um, box lots. They will take a table full of boxes uh, that are cut off tops and full of stuff. So you're you're buying the whole box of stuff. Um, uh, generally, and it'll be your choice. You'll hear them say your choice box lots. But what that is is that there'll be maybe six or eight boxes on a table, and uh, the bidding starts, and it'll start at wherever he he wants to start it at. But wherever whatever you bid and wherever the bid becomes and sold, you get a choice of any of those boxes that are on the table. So you could take one, you can take more, uh, whatever. Once you pick, you say you win it at twenty five dollars a box, and you pick your two boxes out. The bid opens up again for the next round because now there may be six boxes left there. So um, that that's that's how the, it goes round and round until he gets it down to where no one seems to be interested in maybe the last two or three boxes, and then he'll bundle them all together and say all three boxes we're going to bid now the next bid for all the boxes left on the table, and they may go for twenty five dollars, they may go for less. Um, in most auctions, the, the the box lots like that happen kind of at the end of the auction. They tend to do all the big single items in the beginning, and at the end they do the loan. So by that time, a lot of the people have left. And when I've found that, that's when you get your kind of your good deals. Uh, what you want to do when you're looking in those boxes as you're walking around, you're looking for um, two or three hot items that are in the box. Sometimes they'll seed them with you know good items. It'll be a box full of kind of so-so stuff, but there might be two or three really hot items in there that you're interested in. So that's generally how people pack those boxes, the people that know how to sell box lots at auctions. That's what they do. So uh, that's just something to look for and to understand when they do your choice type of auctions. They'll lay out 20 things on a table, 10 things on a table. You start bidding, and then whoever the highest bidder is gets first choice of however many they want. The bidding stops, it opens up again, and then that the rest of them get bid on, you know, get bid on for the rest. So, um, there's a little clip. This little clip shows a little bit about that too. All right. That one box is all please, right? Turn it. Okay, so that's all coming. Okay. So this one is Here we go. I got five dollars to go. Got ten. Put it here. Got fifteen. Fifteen. Got twenty. Twenty for choice. Got twenty-five. Twenty-five for your choice. Twenty-five. Got twenty-five. Got twenty-five. 25. So let's get started. I've got a truckload of stuff and I'm going to unveil it here. Uh, this is kind of like the morning after. This is where you uh, you wake up and you look at the, how much you spent and you go, oh my gosh, what did I do? But here we go. Hopefully I made good decisions on most of this stuff. Uh, one thing's cool is I did take, um, I took uh, 10 items I took to sell. I took 10 uh, radios, uh, tube radios, I took a couple of German made radios, some worked, some didn't, record players. I sold uh, eight of the ten and for $200. Uh, I got two, about over 206 or ten dollars, I think. I'll, they'll take a commission, they take 27%, so I'll get, what, about 180 or something like that for it. That's not bad. This is stuff that I had stuffed away that I just hadn't looked at in a long time. And um, I did have to bring two of them home. This is one that I brought back home, um, this Admiral. But you know what? Uh, next month there's going to be another auction, and I will take it and try to sell it. I was getting an average of 25 to 30 dollars per per radio that I that I took out there, and some of them didn't even work. You know, it was just I took the ones that look good. So people like these wooden ones like this just for display if they don't work, and they'll pay 25, 30 bucks for them. This one's got like a few dings on it, so. And it's big, and it took up a lot of storage under my story in my in my uh, radio room. I've got stuff stacked under the under the table, so it gave me some room. So, all right, let's see all the goodies. Oops, make sure I don't break anything. <clears throat> let's 
that's uh, here. So, where do we start? This big monster. This is kind of cool. This is uh, a, a wall hanging. Uh, I don't know if you call it a picture or uh, call it a picture. It's made out of brass. Um, is it, 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 it's a horn, uh, like a, a bugle. It has these? All this is brass. All these little things are brass. Some are missing. I found a couple laying on the floor when I bought this, so I picked them up. Not to put them back on here again. Uh, the sun. This is all solid. This is wood. This is like. Uh, I have to make, move some things. So I can pick it up here. Hold on a second. Oh, this by the way was free. <laughs> This lamp, it says, I don't even know, it says World War II, crazy. I mean, people put things on, memes on things, and a lot of it's not true. They had a, a helmet there, they called it a World War II helmet, but it was not. Actually had it, I sent it to the, uh, the collector's catacomb site, and thanks to Eric, verified that it was not. That was a 50s German uh, military helmet, and I had a feeling it was not American. Uh, I've seen a lot of American World War II helmets, and it didn't have the seam in it. But anyhow, they verified that for me, so thanks, guys, for that. Um, so, yeah, this is metal. This is all inlaid here. It's metal. And uh, this is brass. Oh, this is brass. Got a little dent right here. It's been around, so I have, have no idea how this hangs. I'm trying to figure out if it hangs long ways with this end down. The hooks on the back, there's hooks on the back from there and there. I hurt my wrist yesterday, so I was picking this up. Whoops. And uh, so the hooks, there's hooks to hang it long ways, uh, hooks to hang it cross ways, horizontally too, or, or vertical. So I guess you could do it either way, but look at this thing, it's like all wood. This thing's heavy too, it probably weighs 40 pounds. Uh, you'd have to have some monster hooks in the wall. But this is probably going to go to my uh, uh, one of my booths. Uh, that's what I'm doing here. I'll be sorting this stuff out today, leaving it here. I'll make a run to my two antique booths places and offload it, not have to put it in my house or store it anywhere. I'll just take it directly over there. That saves me some time. And uh, this is a project stool. I have, it's piled up here with stuff on it. Let's see if you can see it. This is a 1930s... Uh, it is a projector, uh, um, movie theater projector arc lamp. So it's the lamp that produces the light for uh, in theaters during the 30s, all the way up to the 50s. They used this thing. It's a peerless, peerless uh, mag art arc arc lamp. I'm going to clean it up, um, and I want to put it on a stand. I've been looking for a stand to put it on, and I'm thinking I can do this because it's decorative this up and it's sturdy that thing is really heavy and I think I can mount it on there and make a cool display maybe even put some a stack of uh, like movie reels underneath of there and I'm, I'm actually looking to sell it when I get it all together so uh, it'll be kind of a movie memorabilia art piece uh, that I hope that I can get some big bucks for um, and I go for that here are some I think I paid 20 25 dollars for that steel for that aluminum uh, stool over there which is which is okay I, I was looking at Harbor Freight to a, for a steel stand and they were gonna run thirty dollars so um, this is a, uh, a little uh, uh, was a drawer for type typesetting drawer you know they put all of the type for uh, uh, old printing type letters in here Somebody's varnished it up, and they probably use it to hang knickknacks in. It looks like they have hooks on the back to hang it this way. And uh, that, I paid $10 for that. I've seen those sell for $40 um, in some places. I got a couple of them. This one's been painted. It's the same thing. I think I paid 10 bucks for that. It's been painted, a little knickknack thing. That's uh, mall space stuff. <clears throat> Some of this stuff, I just, it was just kind of cheap, and I knew I could put it. These, which are <laughs> movie posters, I paid a dollar a piece for these. Uh, it's not the poster I wanted so much, it's the, the frame and the, uh, 
a frame because these frames were like 15 bucks to buy them. So these came around twice, nobody bid on them, and finally they, they put them up and for cheap. So I says, all right, I'll grab it. I'll get them for like a dollar. I got posters. And here's something that's, I got two of those. Here's I don't know if anyone's into these posters or not. This is kind of Charles Bronson stuff. Oh no, that's Jack Nichols. And that's Charles Bronson. The Border. These are uh, actually brand new. They're in really good shape. They're on canvas, mounted on a frame. They're coffee shop. Coffee shop signs. So if somebody has a coffee bar at their house. Oops. Oh, got some gook on that one. Looks like oil or something. I'll have to clean that. I, know, I paid uh, uh, five dollars for both of these, and uh, they'll probably go in my in my mall space. Somebody will, either some uh, shop owner or someone who's building a coffee bar in their house, and get that stuff. All right, some of this is gonna. I'm gonna have to probably stop the video to pick it up out of here as I sort through it. So this is the first part of uh, how to bid at an auction, how to source at an auction. Uh, just some of the tips from my experience of doing it. I'm not the expert at it. I've been doing it for four or five years and I go to these things, you know, throughout the year. Um, I, I just want to maybe give you some tips if you're, you know, if you've never been to one, some, some things to look for. Some things you might want to do is if you don't have auctions in your area very regularly or you're kind of still uncomfortable about going to one, uh, ProxyBid is a uh, ProxyBid.com uh, is an au online auction site where they actually it's live auctions that um, uh, they do online. So uh, many of those auctions, those live auctions, the audio and video from the auction uh, is available. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to sign up to it. You do have to provide if you're going to bid, you need to provide a credit card number or some more information. But you can watch all of the auctions. You can um, Turn on the audio video mode if they're doing that and you can actually hear and see the auction you can see pictures of the item it's kind of a cool place to source i do that sometimes you just got to remember that when you do proxy bid shipping is an issue there you're going to have to ship almost anything everything that you're going to get there and the shipping rates are kind of high sometimes but just to get an experience and to listen to an auction kind of hear what the process is and whatever it's kind of cool to get on there and check that out so Anyhow, I'm going to cut this video a little uh, short. I still have more stuff. Um, this is actually getting to be a long video. Uh, I, I have more stuff I want to show you, kind of some of the stuff that I found uh, at this auction and what I got at this auction. So um, stay tuned for part three on this. And um, hey, there's plenty of stuff for everybody out there. Um, I, I tell that to everyone. So uh, have fun picking, have fun finding stuff, and see you on the next video.